Hi, on the 22nd of June in Wolverhampton, British cruiserweight champion Enzo Martinelli defends against Shane McPhilbin in a you know hotly anticipated rematch. Um, this, you know, I'm credit to both guys. I'm looking forward to this. Um, credit them for uh, you know having the rematch. Um, what can you say about the first fight? The first fight was a great fight and definitely a, a contender for fight of the year in Great Britain. But, you know, it will forever be remembered for that controversial first round. Um, it, um, Enzo Macronelli looked out on his feet. Um, Shane McPhilbin caught him with a left hook. Enzo starts wobbling. He falls backwards as McPhilbin advances on him and, you know, hits his head on the ropes, goes down, gets back up, takes a knee, gets back up properly, and then the bell goes uh, with 40 seconds left on the clock. 47 seconds left on the clock. Um, unbelievable. Uh, the timekeeper then, I think he then got um, the minute between rounds wrong. Uh, he just had the worst night, you know, that he could possibly have had. And, you know, good thing on the uh, British Board of Control, they suspended him. I think I think he got something like an 18-month suspension. I mean... Um, I, I, something like a 12 month suspension or an 18 month suspension in which he has to, you know, take all the training again. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, if you can't work a clock, you know, and a bell, then, you know, maybe you weren't meant to be a timekeeper. So anyway, um, you know, great um, credit to both guys for taking a rematch and I'm really looking forward to it. I've got my laptop down here for this one because I, I can't be bothered to remember all the names. Um, and that's what we got to look at in this one. Enzo Martinelli's chin. <clears throat> he got knocked down by Shane McPhilbin, who, you know, is a bit of a puncher, but, you know, he hasn't really beaten a, a cream of the, you know, a creme de la creme list of, you know, great fighters. And he still managed to knock Enzo Martinelli down. And I think I've got something in my bloody left eye. Um, it's all this bloody hot weather, I tell you. So, um... If we go down the list of, you know, the guys who have knocked him out over the years, okay, fair enough, they've all been top quality guys. But, like I said, you know, he, he got floored by um, Shane McPhilbin and nearly didn't get up. He got brutally knocked out um, by um, Alexander Frankel. Okay, Alexander Frankel, he hasn't done much since, but, you know, I'm hoping that there's still hope for that guy because... Um, he, he did look good in stopping Enzo Martinelli. He got stopped by Dennis Lebedev in three rounds, but we all know what he's capable of. He got stopped by Ola Afalabi, but again, just look at how good he looked against Marco Huck on two occasions. So, so again, these are all world-class guys. He got stopped by David Hay in the second round. <clears throat> Everyone knows who David Hay is. And the one before that was years ago when he got stopped by Lee Swaby, who's a you know journeyman, but, you know, can't hold that against him, that was years ago. Um, so when he steps up in competition, he does tend to get knocked out. But, you know, let's not knock the guy. I mean, you know, just look at his title reign. He beat some good fighters in um, June's title reign. He beat like guys like Wayne Braithwaite, who was coming to the end of his you know career, but that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, Bobby Garn, pretty decent. Mark Hobson, pretty decent. Uh, Marcelo Dominguez, pretty decent, you know, all pretty decent guys. And before that, he had a long run as WBU champ, and he beat a lot of, you know, domestic level fighters. So anyway, the point is, he's not an awful fighter, um, and he was probably a worthy champion, you know, albeit WBO. Um, but, you know, <laughs> that chin of his, Sh Shane McPhilman floored him in, like, the first two minutes of a fight. Um... So, do I think Shane McPhilbin is going to do it again? <sighs> That's the thing. <clears throat> Had the fight not been stopped after two minutes of their first fight, Shane McPhilbin was going for a knockout. He had 47 seconds left to knock a guy out who was out on his feet. He would have taken another f um, knee, for certain. He might have even taken another two knees. In that sense, he would have been... 10-6 down after one round, or at least 10-7 down after one round. Does, and then also just the confidence that it gives you, you know, if you floor your opponent twice in the first round, imagine the confidence you have in the second round. You might have got another, uh, you know, you might have floored him again. 
So anyway, whatever happens, had that 47 seconds gone on, I think he would have been on his way to a, a unanimous decision or a stoppage. Um, so I think that was very, very unfair. Um, and we actually interviewed Shane McPhilbin on ringnews24.com. Uh, we interviewed him when we asked these questions, and he's not at all bitter, which... Personally, I think I'd be very bitter. I'd be like, Jesus Christ, I've just beaten him. I don't want to have to do it again. But he wasn't. He was very grounded and um, he said something like, um, you know, what can you do? This is boxing. I'm just glad that he's given me a rematch and now I've got to go and do it again. Which I think is very professional of him. I mean, you know, credit to the guy for professionalism because, you know, how many boxers just, you know, whinge when they've lost, you know, naming no names. Um... So, and before the Enzo Marinelli loss, he beat um, Leon Williams, which was a shocker. I mean, he was down on all three cards, I think he was. Um, I'm pretty sure he was down on all three cards. Either way, he needed a, a stoppage win. And he goes and floors the guy twice in the last round and gets the stoppage. I mean, unbelievable. So, credit to the guy. Uh, he definitely deserves it. And I don't know who I want to win, because, I mean, at the end of the day, I, li I like both both Enzo and Shane, um, so I don't know who I think is going to win, but if you're going to Shane McPhilbin, you're going by stoppage, I think, you know, Enzo's been stopped five times in his five losses, so if Shane McPhilbin wins, you've got to go for the stoppage, otherwise you go Enzo on points, I think, um, so that's it, basically, that's it in a nutshell, either Shane wins by knockout or um, Enzo wins on points. It it's such a 50-50 fight. I have I just don't know who I think is going to win. I think I'm going to go Enzo on point simply because he's got all the pedigree, he's got all the experience, and he'll know what Shane's coming, you know, with in the second fight. So I'm going to go what I think the bookies would have as a safety bet, which is Enzo on points. But if you want to go Shane by knockout. It's the exact same bet. It's you know, it's a fifty-fifty fight. Um, I'm just looking forward to it. All right, that's my prediction.